Okay, we are going to talk about perpendicular bisectors. It's about the hundredth time I've tried to record it. Just going for it. Um, using perpendicular bisectors in proofs. We need to review a little bit of vocabulary. Perpendicular bisector is a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. I think most of us remember that. I hope we do. And we have to know this word equidistant we're going to use a lot. It just means the same distance, of course, equal and distant, equidistant. And we need to be able to recognize equidistance when we have a pair of congruent segments. So here on this drawing, we have marked AB is congruent to AD, segment AB congruent to AD. In other words, A is equidistant from BD. And we have C, segment CB here congruent to segment CD meaning C is equidistant from B and D. So let's take a look of how we use that. So first of all, how do you prove that something is a perpendicular bisector? This theorem doesn't seem to be in your book, but it is handy. And unfortunately, there um, if I have it hidden somewhere here, there is no shortcut. We have to write it out. If two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then the two points determine the perpendicular of, a, of that segment the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So in here, if you see you've got two points, that means you're going to have two sets of congruent segments before you can prove that perpendicular bisector using this theorem. So if two points are each equidistant, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, I think it helps. I have a real short proof to look at. Um, so if we have a drawing here and it's given that um, segment PA here is congruent to segment PB and segment QA is congruent to segment QB. In other words, P is equidistant to A and B, and Q is equidistant to A and B. We want to prove that PQ is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So we have our given information we just went over, and this is a really short one. Because of that handy proof, I'm sorry, the handy theorem we just looked at. Again, the theorem, if two points, P and Q, are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, segment AB, then those two points, P and Q, determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment. P is equidistant from A and B, and Q is equidistant from A and B. So two-step proof just showing how to, we can apply this theorem. Here's one more um, where we're proving, again, proving perpendicular bisector, a shorter, another short proof. Here we have, let's see if I can get my marker going. We've got segment one, I'm sorry, angle one congruent to angle two. And we've got angle three congruent to angle four. I'm getting there, guys. Be patient with me. Um, we want to prove that segment AE is the perpendicular bisector of segment BD. So we've got our given information, but we still can use the um, handy base angles theorem that we learned last chapter. So let's take a look at what I have as the next step. So if we know that these base angles are congruent, then I know that these segments are congruent. And if I know that 3 and 4 are congruent, then I know segment BC is congruent to segment CD. So I wrote this ahead of time. That's that base angles theorem. So that gives me two sets of congruent segments, therefore showing me that I have two points equidistant from the endpoints of segment BD, which is all I need. So just to prove that segment AE is the perpendicular bisector of segment BD, I just needed those two points equidistant. So if two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, they then determine the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Moving on to the perpendicular bisector theorem. So this is, we, are, we already have to have perpendicular bisector for this. So in a plane, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. We already have to have perpendicular bisector, though. So those last one we were looking at was perp proving perpendicular bisector. Here we already have to know that. Uh, a few tips on this one. We can call this the perpendicular bisector theorem. So you can jump right to this shortcut for this one. And here's just kind of a drawing of what we're talking about here. The, um, again, in a plane, if a point 
so point C is on the perpendicular. I know it's perpendicular because of the right angle. I know it's the bisector because of these uh, marking con AP congruent to PB. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So in other words, because if CP is the perpendicular bisector of AB, then length AC is equal to length AC is equal to the length uh, CB. Here's just a quick uh, shot of a, the example problem in your book. So if we know BD here is the perpendicular bisector of AC, then we know that D is equidistant from C and A. Then we know that those two are congruent, and we know we can set them equal to each other and solve for X. And finally is the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. And we can call this one the lies on theorem. Your book doesn't do that. It calls it the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. But we're happy with calling it the lies on theorem. I think it helps us remember um, how to use it. And before we can use this converse, we again already need to know perpendicular bisector. And we need to have those points equidistant. We need to have some congruent segments before we can use this or prove that a point lies on the perpendicular bisector. OK, after a quick costume change, I'm back. And we're going to take a look at a proof that uh, just shows us one way to use the um, Lyson theorem, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. We have circle O, so we know that O is the center, with chord AB, and we have line EF given as perpendicular bisector to segment AB. And we want to prove that line FE passes through point O, or the center of the circle. So we have the given information. And then we're going to use uh, the all radii of a circle are congruent theorem, which there is no shortcut for. So we have segment OA is congruent to segment OB. And that's all we need to use the Lyson theorem. Line FE passes through point O, and I know that because of the Lyson theorem. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the segment.